Hey, everybody. So I often get asked, how do you go about recording depreciation uh, using QuickBooks? Uh, since QuickBooks isn't really designed to track uh, the depreciation on long-lived assets. So I, I thought I'd do a quick video to maybe explain that process. So first of all, just a, a little accounting review. I think most of you know this, but depreciation is where we recognize the cost of a long-lived asset um, as, a, as an expense, and we spread that expense out over the asset's useful life. In other words, rather than taking the entire cost as an expense when we purchase an asset, we uh, recognize that since the asset's going to last a long time, longer than a year, that we should spread that cost out and recognize a portion of it each year as an expense spread out over the asset's life. So um, if you're interested in, in a little more reading, some light reading perhaps, I've put a link to the IRA's depreciation um, frequently asked questions down in the comments, uh, and you can check it out. So I'm going to use the QuickBooks sample company to just kind of walk through this process. Uh, this is the process that QuickBooks recommends and puts in all their training courses. Um, I do have some friends uh, that are uh, accountants that really don't like this process. They feel that it um, uh, it makes uh, your balance sheet overly large, especially if you have many assets. So the process works. This process works really well, or this method, I guess you'd call it, uh, for if you're only tracking a few fixed assets. But if you have a larger number of fixed assets. Um, the complaint is, is that it can sometimes make your balance sheet look really big because we're going to create three sub accounts, well, two sub accounts for every asset account. Um, and so if there's enough interest, I will make another video to show you um, a, another method that that will get around that issue. Um, I don't think it's that big of an issue because most small businesses are only tracking a handful of fixed assets. Um, anyway, but uh, let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to, to put together another video that shows that. Um, and if there's enough interest, I'll do that. Um, so anyway, like I said, I'm using the um, the sample company. And I like using QuickBooks sample company to do stuff like this because it um, it's like a sandbox. You can play in it. If you mess it up, you're not really messing up your real company file. When you exit it, it reverts back to its, its uh, base setup. And so it's just a good place to sort of mess around with QuickBooks. Um, again, if, if you're interested in, in, in messing around with this um, sample company, I'll put a link to it down in the file. I mean, down in the comments, it's something that uh, Intuit has out there for people to, to use. Anyway, so let me show you the steps to, uh, to set up a, a, an asset account here and it's a accumulated depreciation accounts. So there's more than one way to add an account. I think the easiest is to just go to your chart of accounts. And um, I'm going to actually show you this in um, a, in business view with uh, QuickBooks Online. You can look in accountant view or in business view, and most business owners will be looking at this in business view. So here we are in business view, and I'm going to click new, and it's going to ask me what account type, and I'm going to tell it fixed asset, and then I'm going to choose. Um, let's call it machinery and equipment. In real life, of course, you would choose the one that fit um, whatever type of account you were adding. And I'm going to name this one just equipment. Oops. If I can type. I don't have to put anything in description. Of course, I can if I want more of a description there. It's not a sub account. And I'm going to tell QuickBooks that I'm going to start tracking this account today with no opening balance. So I'll save that one. I'm going to create another new account, another fixed asset account, another, another machinery and equipment account, but I'm going to name this one original cost. So if you have multiple assets, it's okay because we're going to call this one a sub account and we're going to call the sub account to the equipment account we just created. So all a sub account is um, is account an account that makes up 
um, a larger account. And so you'll see in a minute how we have this set up, how we'll have two sub accounts uh, to make up the one account called equipment. So I'm going to save this. Whoops. Um, I could have told it, put a zero balance, but if I don't put that, then it will just assume zero balance. Usually I, you only have to fill that out if you actually want to have it start with a balance. So I'm going to add one more new account. I'm going to call it a fixed asset account again. And this one I'm going to say is an accumulated depreciation account. And I'm just going to leave its name accumulated depreciation and make it a sub account of our same equipment account. Again, I can choose today, or if I just leave that all blank, it will just assume that. All right. So now you can see what I have set up here is this asset account, fixed asset account called equipment. And then it has two sub accounts that make it up, one called original cost and one called accumulated depreciation. So when I actually purchase the equipment, uh, I can go ahead and enter that into the original cost account. There's more than one way to do this. Um, as you've probably already know, if you use QuickBooks at all, uh, that you can kind of do it forward or backward. I could go to the checking account if I'm paying cash or paying with my checking account, and I could enter or write a check there for the equipment and choose which accounts. Or I could go to the equipment account and view the register and do it from that register. So we have options. So I'm just going to go to my equipment register. I'm going to add a journal entry. And then I have to choose who I'm paying Let's say we're buying this equipment from a business called Cool Cars. We can put a memo if we want. You have to be careful here if you've done a lot of accounting because normally if, if you've done accounting, you would think in terms of debits and credits and you would expect the debit account to be on the left. Um, but QuickBooks works in increases and decreases. Um, and so because it's made for non-accountants. So we're going to increase this account Let's just say we paid $35,000 for this equipment. Um, and then we're going to tell QuickBooks where we paid for it from, which in this case is our checking account. So if we save that, we can now go back to our chart of accounts. And you can see right here in our original cost, we have added $35,000. And because there's no accumulated depreciation, the total book value of our asset will show as 35,000. Book value just means your cost minus any accumulated depreciation. So now let's say we get to the end of the year and we're gonna recognize now that we have used up or depreciated some of the cost of this asset. So what we're going to do is come to our accumulated depreciation sub account, go to the register, and create a journal entry. We're not going to have a payee, okay, because this is kind of an in internal uh, entry that we're doing here, but we're going to show a decrease. Let's just say our depreciation is $5,000. And again, I would say in real life, uh, as you're trying to figure out what's the right amount to depreciate, it's a good idea to pay a little bit to get some expert advice. You know, you can track your own books, but it's a good thing to to let that accountant or that enrolled agent figure out the amount of depreciation for you. Um, if if you want to do it yourself, there's plenty of information out there um, that, that can help you do that. But uh, like I said, there's certain things um, that... I, I like to pay a professional for. Um, anyway, so I'm going to have the amount of my depreciation and then the account, we're going to put depreciation and you'll see we have depreciation here as an expense. So here we're telling QuickBooks, decrease the amount of my total asset um, equipment by 5,000 and record that as a depreciation expense. I'll hit save. If I go back to my chart of accounts, you can see that here under equipment, I have an original cost of 30,000. I'm sorry, I have an original cost of 35,000, an accumulated depreciation of negative 5,000. And then my equipment now has a book value of 30,000. 
So this is the simplest and most common way to track your depreciation um, in QuickBooks. Uh, if you have any questions or things that just pop up, uh, let me know. Just put them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. If we stray too much into something that sounds like um, financial advice, I, I I would recommend, again, using um, an accountant or an enrolled agent for those types of questions. Um, but just questions generally about about this process or, or maybe some of the terms, uh, feel free to put them down there and I'll do my best to get them answered for you. So if you found this helpful at all, uh, or interesting in any way, uh, please subscribe uh, or like or comment or share or, or all of the above. Uh, this will help my content reach more people. Um, this isn't monetized, so I'm not making money off of this, um, but I do think it's helpful to certain people. And so uh, if you will share or do those sorts of things, that will help it reach more people and will encourage me and let me know people are actually interested in it so that I can make more. Anyway, have a great day and I hope this was useful.